Hello, welcome to the Northland. Okay, so this video, this one will be, well, I'm thinking probably pretty short compared to the last couple, but um, anyway, we're going to test the new spoiler. Um, fuel mileage with the gurney flap on versus without the gurney flap. Let's see if there really is a difference. Now, they say that the gurney flap um, is meant really just for the track to give the car a little extra downforce, uh, better handling, and that everyday driving you would take it off to better your gas mileage. So we're going to see how much that little, I don't know, what is that, maybe two inches at the most that come up from the uh, top of the spoiler, but um, anyway, we'll see if there's really a difference. I'm not sure it'll be a whole lot. Um, I already tested it once. I was going to put the video up, but then I thought maybe it wasn't a very good test because um, uh, <laughs> I actually got better gas mileage with the gurney flap, but then I got to thinking about it, and after I had taken it off, most of it was highway driving, but then um, without the gurney flap on we were driving into like a 30 mile an hour plus headwind most of the way so I decided I'm not going to post that video we're going to redo it and see how it comes up now this isn't going to be just highway driving I'm not taking it to the track this is just going to be your average type driving a little bit of highway a little well probably mostly highway a little bit of city some stop and go stuff whatever but um so, you know, take, take this test result with a grain of salt. Um, and again, this is just going to be average, or at least average for me driving. Um, and we'll just see what the results are. All right, let's, uh, let's begin this little test. All right, so you can see that tank of gas, we got 17.9 miles to the gallon, and we went about 297 miles. I just filled up. So now we're going to reset it. And... Uh, We'll take that gurney flap off and see what happens. Right, so we got one screw out and we're just going to take the rest of these out. There's a total of four. Okay, so and don't lose them. I'm trying to do this one-handed so bear with me here. Okay, so now it's off, and we'll um, we'll see if there's uh, any difference in mileage. All right, so we just filled up um, 19.1 miles to the gallon, and uh, we're, so now we're going to reset everything. Oops, wrong button, and. Uh, We'll have to go back and look at what the savings is. So you can see from um, the other spoiler, uh, I think it was 17.9. So we got what, 17.18.9, uh, uh, I'm trying to do the math in my head, I'm kind of slow, you know. Uh, so we got what, 1.2 miles to the gallon, 1.3 miles to the gallon? Um, 1.2 miles to the gallon. Better without the gurney flap. Um, not a huge difference, you know, but if you add it up over time, you know, a tank of gas, that's 20 miles or so. Um, that you're losing out by running it and you know if you do it over the course of say a summer you know how many ever tanks of gas you know that's two three hundred miles or so just because of one little two inch piece of fiberglass or plastic or whatever um <clears throat> so you know i guess it just depends on your to preference um i don't doubt that they're good for the track um, but as far as just running them around for daily use, um, it's really nothing more than looks in that case. Looks and your, 
you know, using extra gas. Um, so, uh, now, for those of you who already know this, I apologize. For those of you who are um, unaware, the gurney flap is that, um, in my case, piece of plastic. Some are fiberglass, some are carbon fiber, whatever. It's about, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches tall. goes along the top of the spoiler. You saw me take it off. <clears throat> that is named after Dan Gurney, who invented that flap in 1971 for his IndyCar racing team. He was a race car driver. Um, I don't know if he was an owner or not, but um, he's the one that came up with that back in 1971. Now, they use that even on aircraft today. Those winglets that are on the end of airplane wings, which they can also go on the end of spoilers. You'll see some cars with them on the ends. Um, and they even use them on helicopters. They're, um, instead of being up, they're flat out from the tail boom. Um, and they work a little bit different than they do on the car in an airplane sense, at least as I understand. Now, I'm not an aeronautical engineer, so if anybody um, knows better, please comment below. Let me know. Correct me. Um, but as I understand it, on like aircraft, they help provide lift which means the engines can run more efficiently and thereby using less fuel. So uh, they're not just for cars. Now, how it works on a car is you have that flap up, the air that comes down from the top of the car goes up and over the flap and it creates a vortice on the inside of the gurney flap, between the gurney flap and the spoiler, okay? As that air comes up over the top, it then creates another vortice on the back side going in the opposite direction. So on the front side, it's going in a clockwise direction. On, no, I'm sorry. On the front side, it's going counterclockwise, and on the back side, it's going clockwise. Now, on the underneath that, there's a diffuser underneath the back of the car, which brings the air up. So it comes up the back side, and that creates another vortice underneath going in counterclockwise direction. So the two on the back are kind of competing, if you will, and that's what this is what provides your downforce. <clears throat> um, now there's they they've done some tests, and supposedly, if the flap is more than two inches tall, you start to create more drag, which is like the vacuum at the back of the car, right? And that drag then offsets the downforce you're gonna get. So you don't you don't gain anything. In fact, you actually hurt the car more by making that gurney flap taller. So most of the time, you're not gonna see them more than two inches. Sometimes they'll even be a lot shorter than that. So um, anyway, just a little bit, bit of a brief history on the gurney flap. Um, I am probably not gonna run it um, for the most part, I'll probably put on for car shows or whatever because it kind of looks cool. But I think for the most part, um, and I'm not huge on worrying about gas mileage. Um, when it comes to performance. <laughs> but, um, you know, if it's just for looks and if it's going to hurt my gas mileage, why should I put it on there? You know, so uh, I probably, for the most part, won't use it. Um, even, and even at the track. When I go to the drag strip, it's not going to help me at the drag strip. It's only going to hurt me. So it's pretty much road course, autocross, that kind of thing that where it's going to pay dividends. So, all right. Um, I will put, in case you're interested, by the way, that 19.1 miles of the gallon with this spoiler is, I think, almost identical from the stock spoiler. So there really isn't much of a difference there. Um I will put the link to that video in the description below in case anybody wants to go back and look at that one. Um, that is a little bit of a different, I mean, it's not like this video in a way. It uh, covers more between different types of fuels in different cars, and I do a comparison and whatever. So if you're interested, go check that out. So, all right, thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Even if you didn't like the video, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button with whatever you have handy. Make sure you tap the little bell at the bottom so you'll know anytime I upload a new video. And as always, share it with anybody you think may be interested. 
And you know what I say. Even if you don't think they'll be interested, share it with them anyway. Okay. Again, thank you for watching. Stay safe. And we'll see you hopefully next week in the next video.